Hello, my name is Stiley Hayward. I would like to welcome you to the Blessed Hope Ministry. We are a King James grounded family Bible study. These lessons are not to be a substitute for regular church attendance. Nightly I direct my family through the Bible by chapter and verse. We request you to join us and to study from God and His Son Jesus Christ. You may have permission to like, send, or encourage our studies with family or friends. Edification of what God has and what He desires in our life. Study to show thyself approved unto God. A workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly divine the word of truth. You may use our studies, but I request that you do not abuse them. For YouTube videos, subscribe below for more videos. And place the thumbs up and leave a comment or email me. Thank you. Genesis 14. And it came to pass in the days of, we've got some great names here, Amraphel, king of Shinar. Remember Shinar in chapter 10 of Genesis, where you got Nimrod, you got Babel. The language has been changed. You got Babylon coming up in Shinar. Arak, king of Elsar. Clido or Lemur, king of Elam, Tidal, king of nations. Uh -oh. King of nations? A group of nine nations together under one king? Then who comes up at the end of the chapter? Who's one of the subjects in this chapter? But a Jewish man. That these made war with Bera, king of Sodom. With Bersha, king of Gomorrah, Shinnab, the king of Adullam, which is another city destroyed. See, we remember Sodom and Gomorrah, but we don't remember Adullam. And Shimber, king of Zebloni, Zimani, and king of Bela, which is Zoar. Now, here's an interesting note. King of Bela, which is Zoar. Bela is renamed Zoar. When Lot tells the angels, listen, we can't run to those mountains. Can we go to this little city, please? And it was called Zoar, meaning little city. And then he leaves because he sees the sins of Sodom and Gomorrah. So, another thing we see here, here is the first war mentioned in the Bible. And it is a world war of all the known nations to the people of the Bible. You got all these nations versus all these nations. And these were joined together in the valley of Siddim, which is the Salt Sea. I mean, the Vale of the Siddim, which is the Salt Sea. The Dead Sea. But well, now we know where we are. We're around the Dead Sea area. Twelve years they served. Cheater or Lemur, and that name will be changed through as every time we hear it, because it, it's a hard name. And the kings that were with him and smoked the Rephimans in Ashtoreth, Carnelium. Now, these are giants. I thought God wiped out the giants with the flood. And here they are. Five chapters away from the end of the flood. And there they are again. And how were those giants came to be according to Genesis? The, the angels, the fallen angels, had made it with the daughters of the men. And here they show up again. And smote the Reformans, giants, in Astra. And Karnam, giants. And the Zumzims, giants, in Ham. And the Imams, giants, in Shava Karathamum. And the Horites in the, in the Mount Seir. And the Elfram, which is by the wilderness. And they returned and came to En Pishmak, which is Kadesh. And smote all the country of the Amalekites and also the Amorites. That dwelt in Hezer Tamar. Now, and we passed by four. I forgot to mention, I mentioned the giant. Twelve years they served 
that guy. In the 13th year, they rebelled. 13 is the first time that 13 shows up here in the Bible as a number. And the Bible sets forth by the first time a word shows up. And it gives it the definition that we talked about in chapter 13. As 13 is linked to rebellion. I forgot to mention that. In verse 8. And there he went out the king of Sodom, the king of Gomorrah, the king of Adam, and the king of Zebum, the king of Bela, the same as Zoar. That little note. Parentheses in your Bible, they're a little extra footnote of extra wisdom by God, usually. They're wonderful things. They ought not to be passed. And they joined battle with them in a vale, which is a valley, of Siddim. With clatter, cheddar, like I said, you can get several names. The king of Elam. And with Tito, the king of the nations, and Amraphel, king of Shinar, and Arab, king of Elisonin, or four kings with five. And the veil of Siddur was full of slime pits. Remember Genesis 11 3? They made brick, and what did they use for martyr? These slime pits. They used slime. The kings of Sodom and Gomorrah fled and fell there. They died. And they remained in that and they that remained fled to the mountain. And they took all the goods of Sodom and Gomorrah. They spoiled the city. And all their victuals, food, and went their way. And they took Lot, Abraham's brother's son. Who dwelt in Sodom. Well let's run back to 13.12 again. And Abram dwelt in the land of Cana. And Lot dwelt in the cities of the plain. And pitched his tent towards Sodom. 14.12 he is now living in Sodom. He's moved. To where wickedness. And the Bible proclaims before he makes that move. God proclaimed that Sodom was wicked. Verse 13. But the men of Sodom, verse in chapter 13, 13, 13. But the men of Sodom were wicked and sinners before the Lord exceedingly. Don't you think they would have shown themselves? Don't you think that city would have that wickedness and vileness coming out of it? And yet Lot moves into it. Lot makes terrible decisions in his life. And his, and his goods and departed. So here's this world war. Sodom, Gomorrah, and their cities. They're just, they're, they lose. They raid the cities. And Lot ends up with them. And there came one that had escaped. And told Abram, the Hebrew. Oh, look, look at that. Look at that. Look at that. Look at Hebrew. That comes from Hebrew. Hebrew. Who's the first Hebrew? Abram. Abram the Hebrew. And he dwelt in the plain of Murray, Memory, the Amorite, brother of Ishkol. Ishkol. That's an interesting name in the Bible. And the brother of, now that's either Anar or Emery. My Bible cuts off the letter there. Is he A? Okay, mine, it's just the end is missing. Aner. And these were confederate with Abram. They're allied by treaty. Abraham had men that would help him in times of trouble. And when Abram heard that his brother was taken captive, he armed his trained servants, born in his own house. 318 and pursued them unto Dan. You say, well, there's no Dan yet. God knows where Dan is. 
and God knows where Dan will be. And he divided himself against them, he and his servants, by night, and smote them, and pursued them unto Hobah, which is on the left hand of Damascus. And he brought back all the goods, and also brought again his brother Lot, his goods, and the women also, and the people. So this guy, we get 318 men destroy all these cities that conquered Sodom, Gomorrah, and all that. Abraham now from the start is, listen, even in the minute of, of population that the Hebrew people are, with God they win. And here's the first victory of the Hebrews, of Abram. And he conquered the nations. That's kind of interesting because it says, And the king of Sodom, remember they ran to the mountains, went out to meet them after his return from the slaughter of Chedor Lumer, and of the kings that were with him in the valley of Sheva, which is the king's dale. And Melchizedek, king of, where did he come from? Melchizedek and Elijah just show up in the Bible. There's no introduction. There's no play up to, all right, here's this gentleman. Here he is. Melchizedek, king of Salem, means peace. Jerusalem, city of peace. Salem, meaning peace. And yet the Salem that we have in Massachusetts by the Congregational Church is anything but peaceful. You check their history. Remember when they, with Massachusetts in the, in the Congregational Church system, they were building, the, I think it was called the New Israel. I think it is. New Israel, New Zion, something like that. They became <coughs> the Church of America that would be proclaimed to be Jewish people. And that's wrong. They stole the promises of the Jews. That's why they tortured and, and stole the property and killed people of the Bible. Because God told the Jews, you know, those that are against you, go kill them all. Why was there persecution in America? Because they pretended to be Jews. And God told the Jews, you can wipe them out. And Melchizedek, king of Salem, brought forth bread and wine. Why not wine and bread? This is the first time bread and wine show up together. The last time we read about wine, Noah gets intoxicated. And I'm not putting no blame on him because I don't know if he knew about that. But here comes Melchizedek that you will find in the book of Hebrews is a type. It's not, it is not Jesus Christ, but it's awfully close. And he brings before Abram the last supper of Jesus Christ. Abram, I'm going by the date of my Bible, I'm going to say 1940 years before the Lord's Supper, the upper room with the 12 disciples has a Lord's Supper with a man who is the, who a great type of Jesus Christ, the bread and wine. And he was the priest, the priest. There are no Levitical priesthoods yet. And when you read about Hebrew in Hebrews about Melchizedek, this guy set forth the Levitical priesthood in Abraham's loins. Hebrews says that even before Abraham did not have a son, his wife was barren, that he would have grandchildren, and they would be set forth of Levi, of Leah, to be set forth in the book of Exodus, 
by Moses and Aaron to be the priests. That Abraham's going to give tithes. And God says in Hebrews that Abraham gave tithes to Melchizedek through the loins of the Levitical priesthood. Abraham, Abraham takes part in the Lord's Supper and takes part of the Levitical priesthood that doesn't even happen in his time. That's remarkable. Verse 18 brings you to the to this last supper, Jesus Christ with his disciples. And it's after a war. Jesus Christ has the Lord's Supper, the bread and the wine, the last supper, before a war. He said, well, what battle did he fight? He went to Calvary, he went to be buried, and he won by the third day. He conquered death and hell. And today, we take part of the Lord's Supper of the bread and of the wine. To remember the gospel. And that he's coming again. He was the priest of the Most High God, Jehovah, Jesus Christ. This man, wherever he came from, whoever he is, is God's priest, and he comes to Abram. No other men, how many men are in the world now? All over. And he shows up to Abram, the Hebrew. With the Lord Jesus Christ, Last Supper. With the priest. That Jesus Christ, according to Hebrews, is the high priest. There he is. And yet the Bible says in Hebrews, he's not Melchizedek. The Bible says in Hebrews that Melchizedek didn't have a father, didn't have a mother. Same thing with Jesus. But one word says, I think it's like. Like, but not is. Huh? Like unto. like unto. Here's the greatest type of Jesus Christ showing up with Abram. Here is the gospel of Jesus Christ showing up with Abram. And it looks like he got his brother. It looks like Lot could be there too. Because they just got all the spoils. They got all the people back. And then the king of Sodom shows up and says, thank you very much, man. We had such a problem with him. And they're like, here comes this guy walking through the crowd. And he blessed him, Abram. Melchizedek blessed Abram and said, blessed be Abram of the most high God, Jehovah, processor of heaven and earth, the creator, Genesis chapter 1. A foolish, damned Jew would be a Jew that believes in evolution. Because their God, the God of their father Abram, is the God of creation. And not only did Jesus and God create the heavens and earth, Genesis 1. We know that. We believe that. But God and Jesus Christ created a family called Hebrews from this Abram. And has protected them. And if this date is correct. 4,000 years. Maybe a little under. Maybe a little over. Do you realize how many nations have been wiped out. In 4,000 years. Are no longer. And do you know of any nation. That is most hated by all nations. Including America. Hates them. If you don't believe me, go ask the KKK. Go ask the colored organization if they honor the Jews. And yet they're still Jewish people and they are still of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And, <coughs> and God still loves them, even though they're sinning. And it is to God's glory if a Jew would believe on the Messiah, Jesus Christ. And blessed be the most high God, which hath delivered thy enemies into thy hand. 
what enemies are there of Abram right now? This war we just read about, that had nothing to do with the Israelites. Abram went in to protect his, his, his I can't get, nephew. They weren't fighting with Abram until Abram stepped in. Then he kicked their butt. This is prophecy. And blessed be the Most High God which hath delivered thy enemies into thy hand. And he gave him times of all. He's kind of telling Abram, you're going to have a lot of enemies, you and your family. But in the end, you got it all. And Abram gives him tithes. Here's the first time tithe shows up and it's Abram given to Melchizedek. Everything that Abram has, he, he gave tenths. And we're not under the law. Jacob later on is going to say, you know, Lord, if you get me back to my home, you take care of me, I'll give you tenths of all. And this time, so first of all, is under grace. And the king of Sodom said, where is this turkey get up to, to start speaking? Here is a remarkable man in the Bible, and he's only in a couple places in the Bible. Hebrews 7 2. Let's see, let me read about him. I'll read. Melchizedek, type of Christ, the king priest. The type strictly applies to the priestly work of Christ in resurrection. Since Melchizedek presents only the memorials of the surface sacrifice, bread and wine. After the order of Melchizedek, Hebrews 6.20 refers to the royal authority and unending duration of Christ's high priesthood, Hebrews 7.23 and 24. The Aaronic or Aaron priesthood was often interrupted by death. They died. Christ is a priest after the order of Melchizedek, a king, capital K, of righteousness, king, capital K, of peace, Isaiah 11, 4 through 9, Hebrews 7, 2. And the endlessness, endlessness of the priesthood. This is remarkable. And then the king of Sodom, you know, a city that is possessed with, with wickedness, speaks up. And that king is a small K. Jesus Christ is the big K of king. And he even says that milk is a king of seven. It's a small K. He's not Jesus Christ. Yeah, it looks like he lives in Salem where Jerusalem is. It's Jerusalem. Jerusalem has Salem, has peace. And said unto Abram, now watch this, give me the persons and take the goods to thyself. Here, give me my people and you can have the goods. Material possession, nouns, persons and things. He interrupted Melchizedek with give me things, give you things, give me people. So the people are still there that Abraham got back from the World War. And they have witnessed Melchizedek. And Abraham said to the king of Solomon, I have lifted up my hand unto God, the most high God, the, the possessor of heaven and earth. He made an oath with Melchizedek. Something happened between Abram and Melchizedek. He gave him tithe and he was blessed by God through Melchizedek. That I will not take from I will not take from a thread even to a shoe latchet, that I will not take anything that is thine. At least thou shalt say, I have made Abram rich. Abram said he made an oath to God. I am not getting nothing from Sodom. You are not going to get, because you're not going to say, you're not going to write in your books that they'll find later on. And remember, we made Abram rich. He took things from Egypt. 
God allowed the, the Jewish people to borrow things from Egypt on the night that they had the exodus of Egypt. And God said in, through Abram, when it comes to Sodom, and we all know what Sodom and Gomorrah represents, even to 2017 today. And a man of God says, I don't want anything of you. So when a man in 2014, 15, I forget what year, when a man says to a Sodomite couple, I am not going to make your cake, he gets the whole world all upset. And that's biblical. I don't even know if he knows his word. I don't, Abram says, I'm not having anything to do with your city. You're wicked. Chapter 13, verse 13. Take your people, take your stuff, and get out from me. Get away from me. And I can imagine what is not written in the Bible. Because there's, you know, the Bible doesn't record everything. I can imagine the way Abram is, you know, he loves Lot. I can imagine because Lot, you don't belong there. You were living before that city. You were living in the city. That, that, that's not it. That's not it. And later on, when we come up with Lot again, we're going to find Abraham praying to God that, man, if you can just find ten of Lot's family, will you not will you not destroy the whole city? And then when the city is destroyed, that God couldn't even find ten righteous people in Sodom. It says that Abraham got up early in the morning and looked and he saw it was burning. It was smoking. And I guarantee Abram, Abram's heart was like, was Lot among them. And he wasn't. Save only that which the young men have eaten. Okay, what they've eaten with... That's the only thing you're going to give me, what they've already eaten. And the portions of the men which went with me. The soldiers that were with him went and spoiled. Aner, Eshko, Memory, let them take their portion. They have a fee, they have a price, let them take their price. But as far as me, you get away from me, I ain't taking any of your stuff. And that closes that chapter. So the king of Sodom stepped in and ruined the chapter, but we get only four verses of Melchizedek. How wonderful four verses they are. 